Young George Kessler moved to Dallas with his father and his family right after the Civil War. He was a German immigrant. He had two kind of encounters first in his youth, coming from Germany with his father, who was trying to find fortune in the New World, bounced around and ultimately settled in Dallas. His father tried some businesses, expired, and then his mother took him back to the old world where he got an incredible education in the great gardens of the world, and then he came back. He came back after being re-educated in the old world to return to the new world and become what was then known as a landscape architect. He's in his late 20s at that point, and quickly, through a series of being kind of recognized by great cultural individuals at that time like Frederick Law Olmsted, he finds himself right in the trajectory of boom towns like Kansas City where he's given uh, opportunities because he had the expertise to do things that no, none of the elders there knew how to do four or five years. He becomes world famous as a, a landscape architect, but not just a garden designer, but a city planner. He conceives cities as extensions of landscape. And from there, he goes on to do the St. Louis World's Fair, several other projects. He was extraordinarily busy, extraordinarily influential. What Kessler found a way to do through his very eclectic, idiosyncratic education is he turned himself into a new kind of urban planner where landscape and nature drove his street and boulevard networks. But he used his knowledge of great gardens and uh, uh, cultural landscapes to drive urban form in a way that heretofore had never been really uh, conceived. Dallas, he, he faced a wild frontier town that he was attempting to civilize with planning and public landscape architecture. And he had a technique and approach. He tries to apply it in Dallas, but it really is taken in a direction of favoring more these larger engineering needs of the railroads, the street infrastructure, uh, and the levees. When one takes the entire Kessler plan into consideration, it becomes more than just a plan. It becomes um, a real tome of why history is important. This is why institutions and agencies such as the Dallas Historical Society are so important. They are much more than entities that just, you know, romance the past. They actually keep history alive as something relevant and important to what we're doing today. This is why Kessler is really important. He produced ideas that were beautiful and resilient and if not indestructible, all in the same gesture. What Kessler produced were places of such elegant and serene simplicity. They compelled people to attach themselves and their emotions and their state of mind to them. And so in a fully realized uh, uh, Kessler space, like in, in Dallas we have uh, Turtle Creek is probably the best example. And uh, in some respects, some of the areas over Oak Cliff, which he just touched and were just barely materialized in and around the bluff of Kessler, we, we still see why he saw those places as being very important and as tomes that would touch people very deeply. And so there's, there's, there's a lot of layers to, to Mr. Kessler that we should be interested in. But the most important one was ultimately his work. Uh, because that's what we're living with, that's the legacy he left us, and these spaces continue and they endure.